Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a couple of unboxings and a few boxings to do today. I've been kind of slow on buying guitars because I was trying to get unburied from all the reviews, but hey, when a cool guitar shows up, you gotta buy it, right? So let's go ahead and dig into this. Looks like we've got some interesting packing materials here. It doesn't have to be pretty as long as it works. <laughs> Do you guys see this? There's a, there's a, there's a mint stuck to it. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if my daughter did that. I know she had one of these a few days ago. <laughs> okay, so we've got a Gen 3 chainsaw case here. It has all three latches. They're functioning and working really well. What is inside? It, it's just a beautiful black Les Paul Custom. I've got a buddy. I think we've known each other for nearly two years now. He had first called me when I was on a camping trip with my family, and it was about that pearl white custom. And ever since then, we've just always been in contact, and what he loves collecting are these black Les Pauls. That's like his entire collection at this point. So I picked this one up with him in mind that he might like it. Uh, but we might see it for public sale, who knows? But yes, this is a pretty nice one. It was described as excellent. I think after a good polish job, it would definitely be within that category, but I'm happy with it because I have not had just a straight up black Les Paul custom in such a long time. And now for box number two. I think this box has been used like at least three or four times because you've got mine, you got someone else's, you've got one right here, another one there. So yeah, at least four times. It's held up pretty well though. We'll rate the pack job again. Eh, a little bit more movement than I would have liked, but you've got some good padding right here at least. Oh my. We got a bunch of stickers. <laughs> and that's the end of the padding. So that guy, he probably should have took some like uh, newspapers or something to fill up some of this space, but I bet it arrives just fine. But what is in this? Is it like something for uh, Fender Friday? Because this isn't a Gibson case. Ah. Okay, so I tried one of these when I went to this collection, when I bought the E90, and I finally got to try one of these and I really didn't like it. But I mentioned this guitar because a lot of people complain that, oh, dumb Gibsons, they angle the headstock, it just breaks. This is the one Gibson that does not have an angled headstock. Now this one almost seems like it does have a slight angle, but the other ones I played, they were like just completely flat and it really freaked me out. So that's kind of why I bought that. But yeah, this is called the SG250. I'll have to teach you a little bit more about that. It's not necessarily one I highly suggest. They feel weird, but you know, there's a lot of weird stuff to them that I thought I I at least needed to do a review and demo on it. Unfortunately, this one is uh, a lot more worn than I thought it was going to be. I do have a third guitar to unbox, but unfortunately I can't do that one yet because I bought another 2019 Gibson. So leave your guess in the comment section, which 2019 Gibson did I buy this time? But we're not done unboxing yet. We're gonna have to do a future time jump here, but I know there's at least one more guitar coming. I don't mean to alarm you, but this is a very 
historically significant guitar. It's not quite as special as like the Hendrix Strat. Well, that could be arguably, but it's like the same level of excitement opening this as the Headless SG. This is gonna be a guitar that not everybody's going to understand, but true, true, true Gibson fanatics are gonna lose their mind over this guitar. And I cannot wait to fully document this thing. I saw this get listed on Reverb and I just instantly bought it. <laughs> it's one of those situations where it's like, yeah, it was more than I wanted to pay, but it's well worth documenting. All right, guys, that's three latches and there's the fourth one. It's a black beauty, but there is so much more that meets the eye to this one. Sure, it still has the original plastic over the pick guard. It's in very good condition. Uh, a little bit scratched up, but I think we can fix that. But there is a huge history to this guitar. And what is the story? This was the last guitar made at the Kalamazoo plant before they shut down. 6-15-1984. That's all I'm going to tell you about this one for now. I'll have to polish and clean it up, but... I'm betting we are going to find some really interesting things with this guitar. And as far as packing goes today, we, we kind of have a sad story with this one. I believe this guitar was part of my first unboxing video. And it's going to a guy who is a big fan of Buckethead. But he had actually contacted me, I think about a month or so ago, he wanted to trade his Buckethead Studio for a Les Paul Custom. Now, just about a week ago, he got diagnosed with very late stage pancreatic cancer. So things aren't looking good for him. So, so he said Buckethead's music's really helping him get through all this. So he decided he wanted to buy one of the uh, higher end versions to pair with his Les Paul Studio. So a little bit sad there, but you know, happy at the same time he gets this guitar, he'll have the complete set, which, you know, I've had both at the same time as well. It really is a powerful feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and surprise overnight this one to him so he gets to enjoy this guitar. All right, that seems to be packed pretty well. Our next guitar to pack here, everybody said this thing sounded like garbage in the playing demo. I don't think it was necessarily this guitar's fault. When Mike did his playing demo, we didn't realize what was wrong with this guitar. There's something funky with the volume pot. So if you have it all the way at 10, it doesn't quite work right. It acts like it's on three. But if you roll it back to seven, then it sounds like it's on 10 and you get a better tone. And another thing is, I just think the, the tubes in my amps have gone bad. Like they're old or something. I'm not really sure how to tell that. 
I've just been noticing like the tone from my demos has just been garbage lately. So I, I definitely need to figure something better out here. But this one's going to a new home, which will hopefully fix it up and make it a little bit a better playing and sounding guitar. We've got one more guitar to back that sold over the weekend here. All right, this is a Gibson Victory. I didn't do a separate review for this one because it has some fret issues, so I just sold it as is. It did make a guest star appearance in my MV2 video though. But these are basically Gibson's first super strat, kind of. I mean, this one doesn't have a tremolo unit on it, but some of them did. They would have Kalers. They're interesting guitars. I'm not going to say they're my favorite, but they definitely give you some very interesting tonal opportunities. Ten of them in this case. These glary boxes, they're by no means perfect. I mean, they're just single ply. I mean, they're not double walled boxes or anything, but honestly, this thing packed up really well. Thank you for tuning into this Trogly's Vlogly. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.